Step 5. Fidelity. We have seen in previous steps that it's impossible to prepare the desired pure uh, states as outputs, whether it's for uh, communication or just the state preparation uh, or during computation. All of the states that we deal with in real life are actually mixed states. Just to remind you of the scenarios, particularly in communication, you begin with some input state psi, and this is a pure state that you would like to use in your protocol. And you send it through a noisy channel. And usually the output at the other end is with some probability you have some state psi 1, with another probability you have state psi 2, and so on and so forth. So you get a distribution of states. And often we are interested in a very succinct way of describing this output or describing the quality of the output state. So naturally, talking about all of these probabilities and all of these possible pure states in this distribution is very clumsy and not very useful. So what we are looking for is a single number that would describe the quality of our state at the output. And that's precisely what fidelity does. So let's have a look how it's defined. Normally we write fidelity between two states with capital letter F. This, uh, that's the fidelity. This row is the actual mixed state at the output. And just to remind ourselves what's the desired input, we also use that as the parameter uh, in the definition of fidelity. So we have the fidelity between the output state with respect to the desired output state, or in many cases just the input state, is defined as this uh, expectation value of uh, the density matrix row with respect to the pure state psi. There are many other definitions of fidelity. Uh, there are simpler ones between just two pure states. There are also more complicated ones between two mixed states. Uh, but in this course, most of the time we will be dealing uh, between uh, fidelities between pure states and mixed states. So we'll be using this definition over, over here. And this number tells us the quality of the output state. Why? Because it varies between 0 and 1. So when the value of fidelity is 0, then our output state is orthogonal to our input state or our desired output state. This means that we can actually distinguish the actual output perfectly from the desired output. On the other hand, if fidelity is 1, this corresponds to the state at the output being the uh, desired uh, output state or in many cases, the actual pure input state. So let's have a look at some examples, just to give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of exercise with how fidelities are computed. So let's say that the output is actually the desired output. So we have rho, uh, is this pure state written in uh, density matrix formalism. Then we just substitute it into our formula for fidelity, and we get that fidelity is equal to the inner product between psi and uh, psi squared. And we know that the inner product of a normalized state uh, with itself is just one. So there we go. We have fidelity of one, as we said on the previous slide. Now, what if uh, we are trying to prepare a particular state? Let's say state zero. In many communication protocols, and also uh, the usual case on quantum computation, is that you are first you need to initialize your quantum state to zero. So. Our desired output state, psi, is zero, but we have a very noisy process, very noisy channel. Our equipment is very bad. So uh, what we get at the output, the actual output, is a maximally mixed state. So with probability half, it's in the zero state, and with probability half, it's in the one state. What's the fidelity then? Well, we can just compute it. We substitute it in, and it's very simple here. You can see that the inner product between zero and zero is just one and between 0 and 1, it, uh, it is 0, it vanishes because 0 is orthogonal to 1. So the final fidelity at the output is 1 half. Notice that it's not 0. It is 0 only for orthogonal states. This is a little bit counterintuitive because after all, this pure, uh, uh, pure state which, undergone a very, which had undergone a very noisy process turned into a maximally mixed state. So in, intuitively, this is a most useless state for us. Yet the fidelity with the uh, input state is still a half. It's not a zero. What if we have um, uh, two quantum bits and we are trying to initialize them in the zero state, but due to the imperfections in our um, uh, laboratory, 
we get again a maximally mixed state, but this time of two qubits written as, as that. Then we can again compute the fidelity and it's one quarter. So you're, you can see the pattern here that in fact for n qubits, if we are trying to initialize all of them in the zero state, but at the end our actual output is a maximally mixed state of n qubits, the fidelity scales as follows, one over uh, two to the n. Now let's go back and consider our flip channel from which we introduced it in step three. So just to remind you, this is a very simple channel and what happens is that the input state psi changes uh, with some probability into this state. We apply the Pauli X operator to it. And with the remaining probability of one minus psi, actually nothing happens to it. We apply the identity operator and we get the input state out. So again, we write down what's the output. We have to write it in the matrix form, so in the density matrix formalism, and it's written as one minus p, the projector onto the state psi, plus uh, probability p times the projector onto the other state where we are applying the Pauli x operator to the uh, pure input. And again, we substitute into our formula and what we get, again, because zero and zero, the inner product between zero and zero is one, and the inner product between zero and one is zero because they're orthogonal, we get that the final fidelity is one minus p. So why do we care about uh, a single number that describes what happens at the output? Well, as we said, it, fidelity measures the quality of the state. When it's zero, we are uh, completely in the wrong state. When it's one, we are in the desired state. And often, uh, fidelity can be interpreted as the probability that the state that we have at the output actually passes a test for being the desired output state. What this means that even if you get the, uh, some state which has fidelity less than one, it's not a completely useless state and you can still use it in your protocol. Although not uh, with a certain uh, um, uh, certainty, you will have some probability of failing. And also many protocols in communication and quantum computation use fidelity as some type of requirement for your task uh, to work. For example, if you want to uh, do entanglement purification in quantum networks, your initial fidelity has to satisfy a certain criterion of being higher than some critical fidelity. Similarly, if you want to do fault tolerance in quantum computation, there are threshold theorems which tell you that in order to be able to apply fault tolerant quantum computation, you must satisfy some initial fidelity requirement.